Welcome to St. Hugh of Grenoble. Please take a moment to make sure your cell phones are silenced. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Ascension. Our entrance hymn is number 619, Sing We Triumphant Hymns of Praise. That's number 619. <laughs> the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy.
Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving, for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Good morning. Today's readings can be found on page 132 in the Missalette. A reading from the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, which are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones. And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe? In accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. With you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his hands, and blessed them. As he blessed them, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. They did him homage and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. On this solemnity, the ascension of our Lord Jesus into heaven, the Christians are given the joy of the glory that Jesus enjoys now with the Father in heaven. This is a crowning moment, if you will, for the mission of Jesus. He has finished what he came to do on earth through his life, death, and resurrection. He brought freedom to us, freedom from sin and from death, and at the same time, he now receives glory from the Father. This solemnity of the ascension is also the sign, if you will, that God the Father has accepted the oblation that Jesus made of his own life 
on our behalf, that burnt offering, if you will, and then Pentecost, which we will celebrate next Sunday, we will be another definitive sign of the acceptance of the Father, of the mission, and the work that Jesus has accomplished, a work of restoration, restoration of the image of God in us, his creatures. We were made after his image and likeness, and Jesus came to restore that image in us by his sacrifice, by laying down his life for us, and by leaving us not only his teachings that bring salvation, but by leaving us the sacraments of his holy presence. We're invited to reflect and to meditate on the fact that Jesus departs from the disciples while he's performing an act of worship. We are told that we are told that he blessed them as he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. Jesus raising his hands leaves us his blessing. He blesses his disciples. He blesses all his followers. By doing this, he's sharing his joy with us. We are invited to reflect also upon the fact that Jesus does not return to the Father alone. Jesus, who is God and man, who became man in the womb of the Virgin Mary, now returns to heaven and introduces our humanity into heaven. He introduces our human nature into heaven forever so that we may receive life that will never end. We are invited to remember, brothers and sisters, that there are places for us in heaven. Jesus has prepared a place for us in heaven. As he told his disciples, in my Father's house there are many mansions and I am going to prepare a place for you. Jesus invites us to remember that our presence in heaven is desired and expected. He looks forward to seeing us in heaven. And this solemnity of the ascension is a joyful celebration and also a reminder for us that we ought to learn how to love what Jesus loves, to rejoice in what he rejoices. He rejoices not only that he's going back into heaven, but that he has prepared a place for us, that we human beings can look forward to enter into heaven. We are invited to remember, brothers and sisters, that our earthly life is like a preface in a book. Heaven is not the appendix of the book that we're living, but on the contrary, our earthly life is like the, presses, the preface of the text of life that will be heaven, life that never ends, a life that is eternal, like God, our merciful Father. We are invited to think of heaven often because it is our true home. The prophet Isaiah in St. Paul says, Eye has not seen, ear has not heard of the things that God has prepared for those who love him. The things, the heavenly things that God has prepared for those who love him, for those who believe in him, for those who follow our Lord Jesus, our Savior. Heaven is our city, as St. Paul says, is where we look forward to being with God for all eternity. It cannot be compared with the earth in which we live. The earth is a passing thing, says St. Paul. St. Paul describes how he himself was caught up to the third heaven, when he had a vision of God, and he said, I saw things that cannot be repeated. I saw things that cannot be described because they are so beautiful, 
so filled with divine power and with divine love that our human language cannot do justice to those beautiful things that are prepared for us in heaven. The gospel invites us to reflect on this because it is our destiny. Jesus has come so that we may be able to enter into heaven. He has opened the gates of paradise for us by his life, his death, and his glorious resurrection. And we are told by him, by Jesus today in this gospel, to wait and to prepare to receive power from on high. It says, stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And this power is, of course, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, who is also known as God's gift and love. The Holy Spirit loves us because of Jesus, and he is the power of God at work in the church. And we look forward to celebrating the day of Pentecost, to be reminded that at our baptism, the same Holy Spirit came down into our souls to plant the seeds of his gifts and to give us that divine grace that we need in order to follow Jesus, in order to persevere, and in order to grow in love each day, to grow in greater love for God, greater love for Jesus, and greater love for our brothers and sisters. On this solemn celebration, we are invited to pray to the Holy Spirit, to ask him to strengthen us with his divine love with his divine power, and to help us remember that our true home is in heaven. Our true home is where Jesus is, where he has gone to prepare a place for us. Let us rise and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became men. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again in the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the unity for which our Savior prayed before his death, we offer our prayers to God the Father. Our response is, grant our prayer, O Lord, that through the church's joyful announcement of the gospel, love for Jesus may spread throughout the world to redeem all pain and suffering. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For a spirit of gratitude as we observe Memorial Day and those servicemen and women 
who have died to defend this country since its founding and for all who continue to risk their lives in military service. We pray to the Lord. Thank our prayer, Lord. For the grace to embrace the love with which our Heavenly Father loves his only begotten Son, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, Lord. For the poor and all who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, Lord. For faithful marriages and an abundance of vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, Lord. For an end to war and the great suffering it causes, and for those who work for peace and a just ordering of human affairs, we pray to the Lord. And our prayer, o Lord. For the sick among our family and friends, especially Irv Waltel and Michael Russo, that the Lord may bless them and protect them from all evil, we pray to the Lord. And our prayer, o Lord. For all of our beloved dead, especially Howard Thomas Rexon, that Christ, the Good Shepherd, may lead them safely home to be at peace with God our Father. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Most merciful Father, your beloved Son is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the bright morning star that rises upon the whole human race. And we always trust in the great mercy you show us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The second collection today is for the Campaign for Human Development. Our preparation hymn is number 598, Thine Be the Glory. That's number 598.
We lift them up to the Lord. It is right and just. rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son 
and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Peter, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you send from in my room, but only to say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty ever-living God, who allowed those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you, through Christ our Lord. Good morning. Well, we praise God that uh, the Holy Spirit has drawn us together to celebrate these sacred mysteries on this glorious feast of the Ascension. Ascension. Thank you, Father John Martin, for celebrating the Mass and preaching God's Word. Uh, this Friday, June 3rd, our first Friday devotions will be celebrated in church from 7 to 8 p.m., the Blessed Sacrament is exposed on the altar. There's time for private prayer, and also there's a communal praying of the rosary. So you're all invited. Next uh, day, Saturday, Fatima devotions follow the 9 a.m. Mass. In the back of the church at the entrances, you will find a, a new Sacrament of Reconciliation card that we have printed up for your use when you go to the Sacrament of Confession. The cards provide guidance uh, on the examination of conscience. There's a nice uh, review of the Ten Commandments, uh, as well as an explanation of the ritual, and there's an act of contrition, too. So please uh, feel free to take one. Uh, you can take one for somebody else who, who might uh, appreciate it. The share food menu for June is in the newsletter and our e-bulletin. Orders are due by Sunday, June the 12th. Sign up. Uh, there are sign-up sheets at the entrance of the church uh, to bring food for our international potluck reception that uh, we're going to hold on Sunday, June the 19th, following the 11 a.m. Mass, which will be celebrated by Cardinal Gregory. So the Cardinal's coming to celebrate our 75th anniversary. Tomorrow is the Memorial Day federal holiday. Daily Mass will be celebrated at 9 a.m., the parish office will be closed. And of course, most appropriate on that day to remember in our prayers and in our gratitude those uh, men and women who have died in the service of their country uh, these many years past. So um, have a beautiful holiday, a safe one. And by the grace of God, we'll see each other next Sunday. Yes, now I invite you to pick up the prayer card that you will find in the pew racks and pray with me the prayer to St. Hugh of Grenoble to ask his intercession. Let's pray together. O oh God, who wonderfully numbered among your holy shepherds, the Bishop St. Hugh of Grenoble, a man burning with divine charity and outstanding for that faith which overcomes the world, Grant through his intercession that we too, persevering in faith and charity, may merit to be sharers of his glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a beautiful week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Let the earth rejoice and sing. Number six, two, one.